At the same time Patton and Baran were talking on the banks of the Kedala River, old friends all were Kadayan and Vandiyathevan were engaged in a strange thing in a town called Thirukkanadamular on the north bank of Kala Dam. At that time Koli, the North Kaveri, was considered a holy river like the South Kaveri. Every day in Dilamamath, Lord Shiva, who has a temple in the Kanatumular temple, rises to the banks of Kalathak and serves the devotees who have come to take a bath. At midday, every day is festive. Devotees flock from neighboring villages. Even though the Vishnu temple is small in that town, even from that temple, Lord Garuda used to get up to the shore to perform auspiciousness. Thus in the month of Tula, all Workadian planted a novel branch in the ground among the crowd of people who had come to bathe in the North Kaveri and said, Novel or novel? Novel or novel? I have come to fight to establish Vaishnavism as the superior religion in this island. Saivas, Shaktas, Advaitis, Kabbalikas, Kalamukas, Buddhists and Jains, whoever they want, can come and fight. If they win, I'll carry them on my shoulders and crawl around the town. If they lose, I'll have to leave here with nothing but a loin cloth. Navalo Navalo he was shouting. Rudraksha Garlands, Makara Kandas, Kamandalas, Kundalams, Silk Pitambaras and gold coins were piled in front of him. From these it was clear that many people must have been won over in the battle of argument after arguing for a long time. Next to him, Vandiyadeva was standing leaning against a Kadamba tree with a carved knife in his hand. Now he only had a cloth on his waist and a knife in his hand. From his appearance, it seemed that he must have thrown away the knife and scared off those who tried to use force on all Workadian. It came out of the language he uttered when he saw a crowd of Saivas who had gathered and chanted at that time. From his appearance, it seemed that he must have thrown away the knife and scared off those who tried to use force on all Workadian. It came out of the language he uttered when he saw a crowd of Saivas who had gathered and chanted at that time. From his appearance, it seemed that he must have thrown away the knife and scared off those who tried to use force on all Workadian. It came out of the language he uttered when he saw a crowd of Saivas who had gathered and chanted at that time. Warning! Those who fight justly may do battle. Anyone who transgresses and lays a hand on this Vaishnava will fall prey to this sword. Saying that, he swung the knife twice. The enraged Saivas were calmed down. One of them said, O oh Vaishnava! Don't be proud to think that you have won some argument today. Go to Tirunarayur. There is Nambi and Darnambai who can defeat you at the gate and make you run away. Said. Ask your Tirunarayur Nambai to come and argue with Ananta Pater of Tirunarayanapurat. I will probably be there too. All Workadians said. Many times he said novel or novel. No one came forward to argue that. So all Workadian planted the victory flag engraved with the conch wheel by removing the novel branch. Some of the Vaishnavas, who were standing by and watching everything, immediately came near and lifted him up on their shoulders. Narayana is our deity. Let us all praise. They chanted and shouted. Then they said, Vira Vaishnava. Please come to our house and give us the nectar. They prayed that so be it. All Workadian said majestically and took Vandiyathevan with him. Both of them looked at Pulio There, Thirukanamudu, and Athayan Nam with a hand that made them feel sick to their stomachs. Alvar Kadayan gave only one Pithambaram, which he could wear as Angavastra, to Vandiyadeva and gave the rest to the Sri Vaishnavas and received gold coins for their acquisition. He stated that he needed the gold coins as he had to go as far north as Haridwara to establish the supremacy of Vaishnavism. Sri Vaishnavas also willingly gave more gold coins for the acquisition of material things. All Workadian and Vandiyathevan set off for Kadampur in the afternoon. They were unable to bring the mounted horses as the flood was going on in the place. As they crossed the river, the boat was overcrowded and capsized by the time it reached the shore. Like others, Vandiyadeva fell into the flood and had to swim to the shore. At that time, Vandiyadeva had saved his half-scroll and the letters he had kept in it, and the leaf given by Ile Aprathai, which had been saved by Vandiyadeva during many critical events, were lost in the river flood. The gold coins with them were also gone. 
they resorted to the above strategy to collect money to buy new horses. The trick worked and got some money. But it was also known that horses are not available anywhere in those rural areas. Horses may be for sale in the market held once a week in the village of Kadampur, otherwise you have to go to Tirupathiripulayar and buy it. There was a discussion among those friends whether to go to Kadapur or not. They discussed its pros and cons. Any news about Aditha Karakalar's arrival at Kadampur may be received. Would it be good to have any information as to whether he has left Kanchi and by which route? But don't catch the eye of those in the know in Kadapur. If you have to meet Kanamaran, it will be dangerous. If perhaps the retinue of the corrupter had come into it, that too would be a nuisance. Vaishnava. You are the one who knows how to jump over the wall at night? Can you bring two horses from the stables of Sambuvarayar? Vandiyathevan said. I can jump over walls. But do horses need to know how to jump over walls? Said Vaishnava. If the Parivars of Paruvar had come there, they would have beaten two horses and gone. Didn't they drive away my horse at Katapur some time ago? We must take revenge for that, said the warrior of the monkey clan. They talked at length about their meeting in Kadampur a few months ago and the strange events that had happened that night. Both reached Kadapur by sunset. Kadampur was getting busy as they had expected. The palace and the fort gate were decorated with flags and garlands. Both at the gate of the fort and around the wall, the guard was stronger than before. Do you want to hear if the Crown Prince Aditha Kari Kalar is coming? At the same time, Thanadikari Pariya Pulvatarayar is also going to come with Rani. Antaraj of two will also come. For a few days, the town will be in shambles. The two friends heard people talking about all this in the Kadapur shopping street. From the talk of the people it was known that the two Sararas had not yet arrived. It was also learned that Sambuvarayar's son Kanamaran had left for Kanchi to fetch Aditha Kari Kalar. Amidst these exciting talks, some people spoke in a soft voice about the Prince Arulmas Hivarman who was left with the sea. It was clear from their chatter that many people did not like the fact that parties and festivities were being organized here when such a great tragedy had taken place. All Alwarkadian and Vandiyathevan listened to all these talks as if they had not heard and went beyond the town. They do not want to spend the night anywhere in the city. A Mandapam or an inn that has recently been run down somewhere outside the city will be without a booth. If not, it is better to stay at Viranarayanapuram for the night. You can lie down and sleep peacefully in the hall of the big Purumal temple there. They needed a good night's sleep after the first night's activities. After going a little further along the road beyond Kadampur, a thick bamboo forest and within it the Eunar temple were visible. Vaishnava. I can no longer walk. I can sleep in this temple for the night. It is a good place to be hidden from anyone's eyes. Vandiyathevan said. Father. You are wrong. What is certain that no one like us will come to such places? All Alwarkadians said. Vandiyathevan said, it is very good if those who come like that come with horses. No horse can enter this bamboo forest. It is difficult for humans to enter. There must be a single track path somewhere. There must be a way for the temple priest to come. The two wound their way around the densely overgrown bamboo bushes and finally found a narrow single-track path. It was quite an effort to walk through it without getting scratched by the thorns. After going some distance like this, a gap was found. It had a small Eunar temple. In front of the temple, the sacrificial altar and the elephants and horses shot in the canal were lined up. It is customary for devotees to pray to Eunar to bring horses and elephants made of clay. On seeing them, Vandiyadeva asked, Are we so worried about the horses? Can we ask Iyanar and buy two horses? He said. Don't you know the saying don't trust a mud horse and go down a river? All Alwarkadians said. O oh Vaishnava! Our Iyanar is a very powerful deity. One who can grant boons immediately, not like your Vishnu who sleeps in the daytime after leaving his devotees in distress. Vandiyathevan said. Then tell me that he will give these mud horses their lives. It's so good, there's money left over. 
if there is true devotion, earth and horses will also come to life. If we go to see, what are our bodies? Did Lord Brahma make us from earth and give us life? Well said, brother. We forget that this body is a body made of clay. Vaishnava Acharya Purushas have ordered us to bathe in water on our foreheads and bodies to remind ourselves of this often. Vandaya the Vanug. Saying that, he held all Workadian's hand and pointed in the opposite direction with his other hand. It's been a while since the sun set. Iyanar's vehicles seemed to come to life in the dim light that surrounded the dark bamboo grove on all four sides. An elephant and a horse moved from place to place. Vandaya the van was stunned for a while, not knowing whether to believe the miracle he saw or not. But he didn't want to lose the opportunity to make Ayanar's miraculous power known to all Warkadayan immediately. Oh Vaishnava! Have you seen? Before he could say that, all Warkadian held his hand tight and put his finger to his lips as a signal, stopping him from speaking. Then, didn't the horse and the elephant move and give away a bit? Only a man's head could be seen where there was a gap. The head turned around and looked around. The sight of such a head appearing next to Ianar's altar and spinning on all four sides was very terrifying. Vandiyadeva, who had seen so many horrors, was thrilled, but Vandiyadeva felt relieved when he realized that the hand of Alwarkadi who held him was neither trembling nor slack. While they were watching, the head rose up. Seen up to a man's chest. Then the man came up with complete form. Where the man had emerged a small fissure gaped horribly like a black, dark abyss. After looking closely, they knew who the man was. He was an Itumbangkari who joined Ravi Dasan's conspiracy while working as a servant in the Kadampur mansion. When both of them came to know this at the same time, they looked at each other and signalled their surprise. Leaving the gap open, Itumbangkari looked around once more and walked towards the Ayanur temple. He opened the temple door and entered. For a while, the light was visible from inside the temple. They came to know that the lamp was lit inside the temple. Brother! What do you think of this? Asked the servant in a grunting voice. I think Ayanar is a powerful deity, didn't you see the horse come to life? Vandaya the van said. That's right. Come on now, what do you think of him? He looks like a priest in the Ayanar temple. Shall we go and have a darshan of Swami? Wait a minute. Let's see if anyone else is coming for Swami's darshan. Do you think anyone else will come? Then why does he light the lamp? What is the wonder of the priest lighting the temple? Brother! Don't you know who he is? Looks good, he bought a horse and gave it to me on the south bank of Kala Dam. He is the Itumpankari. I see that I can ask him for a horse now. Good idea. You don't like it. Itumpankari is not the only one who bought you a horse. Ravi Dasan belongs to the group. Then another good idea appears. What to do? I thought a dump and carry could find out where he sprung from when he was engaged in Iyanar Kaingarium. How can that be? Can't I go in the hole he came out of? Maybe, but the risks involved. What's a safe thing to do? And your choice. Vaishnava. You watch what is happening from here. Why is it so difficult? I've been watching. Do you have any idea where the tunnel will go? It seems Swami, it seems. I want to know if it is right. Why do you need to know that? Whoever thought it might be useful at some point. At that time other voices were heard in the distance. No time to delay, Vaishnava. Will you stay here till I return? Or do as Sagrivan did to Vali? I'm here as long as I live but what's certain about your return? If I live I will come back. Saying this, Vandiyadeva ran towards the place where the hole was visible. He descended into it, and the next moment he disappeared into the dark abyss. The abyss seemed to swallow him whole. Itumpankari, who had entered the temple, came out and looked around, and saw an open hole. He immediately went there and twisted the mace which was placed next to the sacrificial altar. The elephant and the horse, which had moved away, came closer again. 
the place where the hole was blocked has disappeared. After doing this I Tumpankari again came to Vasapadiand. At the same time Ravi Dasan, Saman Samhavan etc. also came from other direction. All were Kadian hid even better behind the bamboo forest. Ravi Dasan sat on top of the temple door while others sat on the ground opposite him. Comrades! The time for the fulfillment of our fast is near. Said Ravi Dasan. We've been saying closer and closer like this for six months, said one. Yes, there is nothing wrong with that, the day has been drawing near for six months. The day is nearer than we can count on the fingers. News has come that Aditha Kari Kalan has left Kanchi. The efforts of the old man of Thiru Kovalarg to stop him have not succeeded. What's certain that someone else won't stop along the way? Aditha Kari Kalan is not one to put his foot behind him, he will not listen to anyone who stops him. If the message from his sister gets through, how can it go? Did we leave the young man who brought the message tied up in the forest? Beautiful. I saw him this morning on the north bank of the fort. Another of our enemies has joined him. Who is that? Fake Vaishnava pretender. Then we must be careful. We must try to prevent them from meeting Aditha Kari Kalan. It's a story where the trunk leaves the tail. The man caught in the hand could have been solved there. I don't know why the queen asked him to let him live. Comrades! I did not understand it then. Then I came to know, I admit that the Rani has surpassed me. It was with a very important purpose that the Rani asked Vandiyadeva to live. You do not need to know that now. Don't worry about Vandiyadeva. But if you see that Vaishnava, you will not hesitate to take your life. Buy it and look again," said Ravi Dasan.